Welcome to Esther's TV News for Monday, August 12, 2024. I'm Jessica Campbell with the details. In two weeks' time, schools will reopen and with plenty of schools still being used as shelters, the government will have to further relocate shelter use. Prime Minister Dr. Alfred Salves, while speaking on the reference issues at hand program on Sunday, assured that schools will be ready for the new school term. How long they will take you? They said two weeks to do the minor repairs. So I said that means our deadline. We must get these individuals, shelteries, out of the schools this week. Mm -hmm. Bit by the end of this week. Which means you have to get houses rented mm -hmm. for them in particular locales. Or we have to get guest houses and apartments, which we'll pay for. And I'm appealing to persons with guest houses and apartments to contact the Ministry of Tourism, Tourism and register, see what you have. If you have houses, level one or level two repairs, I could get that done in time for you to come out of the school. If your house is level two or level three or level four, I'm not going to get it done in time. So please, rent somewhere. And the government will pay the rent for four, five, six months, whatever length of time it takes for to, to do your level three repair or to build back something for you. The Prime Minister is asking for a cooperation of the shelters with the further relocation, noting that any delay could affect the students' schooling. Or people want to stay yes. in their own locale. Mm -hmm. But when you stay in your own locale and you don't support any joined off shelters, mm -hmm. where shelters are schools, you delay possibly your child going back to school mm -hmm. on the 2nd of September. So all of us have to work together. Mm -hmm. This is when I make the first point about. The government estimates more than $2 million in repairs to schools, which includes the purchase of furniture. Also on radio, the Prime Minister said that dengue fever cases continue to climb at a rapid rate in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with the total cases now at 213. According to the Prime Minister, 100 cases were recorded in one week. You know, 213. So 100 cases additional came over the last over the last week number, and the fogging has increased. Fogging is being done on the leeward side, it's reasonably okay on the windward side. The 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 bulk of the dengue cases are in the Kingston, Calico, Pembroke, Beckway area. It was pointed out by the Prime Minister that the number of cases could be higher as many persons may have recovered without getting tested. While there have been no deaths, the Prime Minister said many persons have been hospitalized, with the majority being children. It worrying to me that we have 17 hospitalized, 17 cases of hospitalization with dengue. And even more worrying than, 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 than that number suggests, most of them are children. Now, while we, while we are addressing all our other problems, we have to be keeping our eye on the ball because Beryl has made the situation many, many times worse. Students are again being reminded to ensure they remove all mosquito breeding sites from their environments. The flash flood watch for St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been discontinued at the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Meteorological Service. However, unstable conditions associated with Tropical Cyclone 5 
are generating cloudy skies and pockets of showers and possible thunderstorms across SVG. The Met Services says that these activities are expected to persist within the next 24 hours as the system tracks north of the island. Some areas in SVG were reportedly flooded, as well as landslides recorded. Speaking in a telephone interview with SVG TV News today, forecaster Gregory Cato said 2.2 inches of rainfall was recorded at the Arc Islands National Airport. Cato further pointed out that Bekwe reported the most rainfall during the tropical wave, which affected the island. Other stations such as the Jennings and Annisville recorded in excess of 30 millimeters of rainfall. However, the highest amount of rainfall was recorded in Bekwe, which is 125 millimeters between 12 noon and 3 p.m. on Saturday. Um, this resulted in flash flooding um, in the Bekwe area. 125 millimeters is just about close to 5 inches of rainfall. Vietnamese services are monitoring the progress of potential tropical cyclone 5. Um, as of 11 a.m. this morning, it was located around 15.1 north or 55.6 west latitude. This puts the center roughly about to, just to the east northeast of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In the next few days, Cato said persons can expect cloudy as well as pockets of the showers. And look forward to pockets of um, showers of varying intensity that could be light to heavy and this could be a, um, accompanied by thunderstorm. So as of 12 noon today, 12th of August 2024, there are no watches or warnings in effect for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, there is an advisory out for a low risk of flash flooding. If conditions do warrant, then we may upgrade accordingly. Residents and motors uh, should remain uh, to continue to exercise caution. In addition, humid conditions are expected uh, up to early Tuesday as wind speeds temporarily increase. Weather conditions should improve from as early as Wednesday. Also, Sahara Dust Hills concentration will continue to thin out across SVG, but it should increase by late Thursday. In other news, the children from the Southern Grenadines and the Beckway have been engaged in psychosocial support through a literacy program or through a humanitarian mission offered by the International Development Coordinating Committee for the Caribbean Community of Four International Developments in the Caribbean, uh, SIDPAR. The one week session, which started today, is led by Justin Blake Brown, SIDPAR's chair. The devastation left behind by Hurricane Beryl created an opportunity for SIDPAR's members to uh, demonstrate solidarity with the government and people of SVG. A professional development session for teachers will also be held. Senior public servants across St. Vincent and Grenadines concluded day one today of a consultation on the legal and policy framework being developed to govern the implementation and operation of a digitized public service are currently being spearheaded by the Caribbean uh, Digital Transformation Project, CARDIT. The CARDIT, in collaboration with iOS partners and Tour Green Consulting, is hosting the Knowledge Transfer and Consultation Workshop to its representatives from the various ministries, departments, and agencies to learn about the best practices and the need for input to the draft policy and legal framework required to support access to various digital government services. During a brief address to participants this morning, coordinator of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project, Winston George, provided an update on where they are with the implementation of the various components of the project. And as we speak, we are in the process now of evaluating um, vendor bids to upgrade the civil registry system, an integrated unique ID system, and basically that will upgrade the government, the, the overall ID system. Um, also an authentication platform, an electronic document and records management system in the government. Also digital sig signature, an integrated um, geospatial framework, a unified land information system, and the national spatial data infrastructure, right? So as we speak, we are currently in the process as well of 
developing all the requirements for a unified land information system. Those are one why the consultation is being held. The consultancy services were to assist the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in reviewing the national policies and legislation within various um, ministries, development um, departments, agencies for efficient and effective digital transformation of, of government services. Develop recommendations and support with drafting amendments to existing legislation and policies and developing job policies and legislation and developing rec um, recommendations to strengthen the capacity of all who will interact with the um, policies, the legislation. Projects in April 2023 engaged the consultancy firm of IOS Partners and Hurricane Consulting to support the development of a key classic cutting enablers to facilitate government digitization, enhance productivity, and citizen facing digital services review and improvement of relevant policies and in national legislation, as well as develop the recommendations on necessary forms. The consultation continues tomorrow at the UWI Global Campus Lecture Hall. <laughs> Students from the SUG Community College in the agriculture sector were exposed to a simulation game workshop today which is organized by the Center for Enterprise Development, USAID-funded Caribbean Agricultural Productivity Improvement Activity and the Embassy of the Republic of China at Taiwan. General Manager of the CED, Lana Tours, told the participants what to expect from the training. So I encourage you to make the best of the opportunity that is presented to you this week. This program, and she'll go into more details later, is an innovative program. It is not just about learning the traditional way of learning entrepreneurship. It's innovative so that you're participating. It's a practical application of actually running a business, a simulated business. You will see firsthand the do's and don'ts of running a business. You will learn firsthand what you can and cannot do, what, you, what plans you should put in place, or plans that you may not have thought of. So I also at the opening ceremony was Minister of Agriculture, Samota Caesar, who challenged the students to use such an opportunity, which uh, is proposing to have a youth uh, form an organization in agriculture. And I want to use this platform to launch an idea that there is a need for a national alliance for youth in agriculture. And that National Alliance for Youth in Agriculture, we would want for the CED to play a leadership role with the Department of Cooperatives so that there can be a platform, and I am going to support this at the level of the Cabinet, and I'm going to support this at the level of the budget, so that CED can get more resources because CED is the cradle for businesses here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Deputy Councillor of the Embassy of the Republic of China and Taiwan, King China, says that the Micro Business Simulation Game Workshop uh, featured a higher percentage in female participation. It means in the future, you know, um, the equality of uh, gender is very important. And nowadays, uh, since the education opportunity, so more female, we have more opportunity to work together, not compete with male. So we have to work together like a team and make the society, make our uh, country be better. The simulation workshop will run for a week, commencing from today and will conclude on Friday, August 16, 2024. Technology is being used by persons for the wrong purpose. This is the view of Project Officer at the Education Research Information Communication and Technology Department of the Ministry of Education, Timothy Scott, while addressing students at the recent RSVG Police Force Scholarship Program. Scott, who is an expert in the HSI field, 
is encouraging people to put technology to good use. We have seen technology being used uh, um, in the process of cyberbullying. We have to be careful. Parents, guardians, all of us here, we have to be careful and guard against this. We must ensure the purpose for which the technology is uh, created is used for, and in that it is used for the holistic development of the youths in a positive way. Students do not allow social media and the use of technology to dictate your path, which in the end can be disruptive and destructive as you go along life's journey. Any increase in knowledge and technological advancement should and must be used for the continual positive development of your lives, my life, all of us lives. 15-year-old Skyler Francois, a student of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Girls High School, uh, was crowned Miss Team SVG on Saturday at the View Boutique Hotel. Fans were popped the crown from many other beauties who entered the Miss Team pageant. First runner up went to 19 year old Milan Compton, and the second place went to 18 year old Lauren Welch. Fans who the Miss Team 2024 was also a judge. To Winner of the best prom wear and the best talent, along with the, and she also walked away with the People's Choice Award for which was a non category. Bishop's College Kingston has emerged winners in the junior school band's Pan Fest with their rendition of the Party Fever, which got away on Sunday at Victoria Park. Placing second was the CW Prescott Primary School with Madness, third place was the South Rivers Metro School with congratulations. In the community band's category, Starless Steel Orchestra placed first with their rendition of A Theatre Party. Second place was Symphonic Steel Orchestra, and in third place was Elite Steel Orchestra. And Blondie Bird and Friends grabbed the first place in the theme and things, as well as the individual's band's categories. For the queen of the band, they portrayed the queen of the Ashanti, displayed by Simon Richardson. SVG Players International placed second, while Verlin Ralph and the Professionals placed third. Placing in second for the queen of the band was Lynx Marsman. A time for third place was Nelson Block and SVG Players International. In the individual band of the year category, placing uh, Second, after Blondie Bird and Friends, was Nelson Block, and in third place was Lynx Mass Band. <laughs>